Hey guys, there are many ways to stand out in a positive way during an interview, but there are some things you can say that will completely mess it up, and you probably shouldn't be saying it. Let's talk about it. These points will largely come from personal experience, as I've interviewed at a dozen different agencies around the Washington, D.C. area. First, be careful when you're mentioning your goals. They will ask you, what are your short-term goals? Where do you see yourself in the next couple of years? When I interviewed at a job recently, it was with the Department of Veteran Affairs, and the first interview, it was amazing. I would give myself probably a 10 out of 10. So the guy asked me, what did you do to prepare for a leadership role? And I mentioned a book that I was reading called Start With Why, and he read that book. So we were going back and forth with some of the points the author had in the book. So automatically I established some commonality with that interviewer, which is exactly what you want to be doing. But then the second interview happened. And during the second interview, the director was trying to figure me out at a deeper level. So towards the end of about a 30 minute interview, he asked me, what are your goals? Where do you see yourself in the next couple of years? And I was honest and I told him, in the next couple of years, I see myself getting promoted to the next GS grade. But the only problem is that this job announcement what I was applying for, there was no promotion potential. For me to get promoted to the next grade would mean I would have to leave that office. So I was essentially telling him that in two years, I didn't plan to be there anymore. So that sends a red flag. People are less likely willing to invest time, effort, and resources in developing you and getting you acclimated with the culture and the customs of that office if you're just gonna pick up your bags and leave two years later. So you wanna keep in mind on how you're portraying yourself and understand that the individual that's interviewing, they're evaluating and judging you and they're trying to figure out, is this somebody that's worth bringing on my team? Is this somebody that's gonna stay for a considerable amount of time? In hindsight, I wouldn't have said that I'm trying to get promoted in two years. I probably would have focused more on the organization I plan on bringing value to the organization, and this is how I plan on doing it. So that, that was definitely a lesson learned. Next, do not say, I don't know, back to back. There will be questions that you do not know, and you should be truthful in saying that you do not know them. But if you find yourself in a situation where you're saying it back to back, that's going to leave a bad impression with the interviewer. So when they're asking you a question and you do not have knowledge of it, try to pivot and give the interviewer information on what you have experience in. So if they're asking you, do you have experience analyzing data in this software, and you do not, instead of, I don't know, tell them that you have experience analyzing data in a different software. So focus on the verb. If they're asking you if you led a team or analyzed data or evaluated data, focus on that verb Utilize that verb to pivot and tell your success story. Next, if they say, do you have experience in a certain area? You do not want to refer to your resume. You do not want to say, yeah, it's on my resume. <laughs> That's the wrong attitude. That's the wrong demeanor to have when you're talking to the interviewer. In fact, you should assume that no one in the room has read your resume, or if you're doing it virtually, nobody in the conference has looked at your resume. Just assume that so that you have no expectations and be willing to talk about what is on your resume. Talk about the success stories and how you were able to bring value to other organizations. Next, when you are talking about your experience, you do not want to dwell or spend a lot of time on your lack of experience. So if they're asking you to describe your experience leading a team, or they're asking you to describe your experience with PowerPoint, you do not want to say, well, I have limited experience in PowerPoint, but what I have accomplished was I put together a couple of slide decks, or I have limited experience leading a team, but there was this one time I led three people. You do not want to focus in or minimize your experience. Tell the story without dwelling on your lack or limited experience. Based on your story, it is their job to quantify or to evaluate or adjudicate how much experience you actually have and is it suited for the role that you're interviewing for. Do not disqualify yourself in this way. Finally, do not talk in a negative manner about a company that you were employed with. If they're asking, why did you leave your last job? 
You do not want to say because of a toxic work environment, because I couldn't stand my boss, because they treated me unfairly. You do not want to place the blame squarely on your previous job. As tempting as it sounds sometimes, and a lot of times it's true, your, your boss really was an abrasive leader and you couldn't stand him. And I get that, but we do not want to tell that to the interviewer. Also, if you decided to leave less than 12 months in, a lot of times that in itself will send a red flag up. They're going to want to know why you decided to leave so early. When you talk negatively about previous employers, a lot of individuals start to think, well, this person's talking negatively about their last company. What is stopping them from talking negatively about our organization when they leave? Or if you've only spent six or seven months at the last job, maybe they might think you're a flight risk and you might be out of here in six or seven months. So these are some red flags that people will look at. If you want to know what to say when asked about why are you leaving your job, you can always say that you were looking for a new challenge. You developed a passion about different responsibilities. So if you're working in accounting or a budget analyst type job and you want to switch to the 0300 series, which is management analyst, then you can easily say that you want to focus your, your passions uh, towards management analysts. You no longer want to develop your career in the budget analyst side. And that's another way to say it. you can easily tell the individual that's interviewing you that you wanted to pivot your career and that's why you're taking this new direction. Another point in regards to interviewing, you want to make sure that you're rehearsing. So find an individual, whether it's a family and friend, if it's a face-to-face -face interview, make sure you're doing it face-to-face. If it's a remote or virtual interview through the computer, then make sure you're able to call somebody on the computer. You want to stick to whatever format you're interviewing for. Have those questions laid out. Look at the announcement and look under the qualification section. Pull out some of those key verbs and create questions and go through it so that you're ready when it comes time to interview. I found it best to prepare and answer questions in the STAR format, which stands for situation, task, action, and result. If you develop between six to eight or even 10 star success stories, that will help prepare some of the framework in which you will be answering the questions during the interview. At the end of the day, it is all about communicating the skills and experience and value that you're able to bring to the organization. I know interviewing is stressful and I wish you good luck. Well, that wraps up my video on do not say this during an interview with the federal government. If you like this video, please click like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.